So I'm just trying to figure out how to get this out. So I think we've got a screw here to take out. I think this one's one of the ones we've got to take. Down there. And there's four on each side, well two each side, so there's four there. I believe they have to come out. I always have to put these other ones back in again for this panel. Once I'm sure I don't need to take that off, I don't think I do, so I'll probably put those screws back in again naturally. And um, that's those. I'll forget about them. And there's another screw here, which I think is for the front panel too. So six screws for the front panel, which will then allow me to detach it. I've got two ribbon cables got left out. Um, they're quite fragile cables, I think. And they're a little bit unusual, so I want to be really careful not to damage those. Right now they appear to be working. Yeah. Um, anyway, so. let's get the screw out while I'm here. Then I'll stick it on its bottom again, and we'll take the sides one out. And these are these ribbon cables I've got this attached from down here. I think they just pull. No, they do have a latch. So I've got to lift that latch up, get these out. It's a little bit tricky to get in there, so I'm not going to film it because I'll just block it anyway. So I'll get those out. And then I'll take these screws out, take the other two screws out, and I sh should be able to get the front panel off then. I think. <laughs> yeah, we'll find out. Alright, so the screws out, see if it actually moves. Oh, yes, excellent, those tunnels are staying in place. That's what I was hoping for. Here we go, exactly what I was hoping. Now I've got to take the circuit board out so I can get to those switches and get them clean. Excellent. So, all right, let's get this thing out. I'm not sure what switch is actually in here. I guess we'll find out shortly. Okay, it wants to lift out now. Also, we've got the display here as well. And yeah, these switches are definitely interesting. Okay. Well, I'm hoping I can um, spray some stuff in there to clean those. They're a bit reminiscent of the switches that are used on the Record Dana 1992 and stuff like that, which have got like a special membrane in them, but these aren't actually failing. The membrane obviously is not bad in them, because they are still clicking. So I'm pretty sure they're just need cleaning. It does look like if we need to, we can actually pull them apart. There's like a latch mechanism there, so you might even be able to open them up if we need to. I'd rather not do that. I'd rather just spray some stuff and hope for the best. So just like there might be standard switches with these keycaps potentially glued on them. I'm not sure if they're glued or not. I might just try one of these minor ones. Let me have a look. The button which I'm not likely to use very often. Front rear. Here we go. We'll check that one out. Front rear button. Yeah. I think I'll just leave the button cap as it is. And just wait if I can actually replace the whole switch as well if I need to. Go with the standard switches. I mean it's got this standard footprint here like this. Anyway, it's just got 1994 on it, so almost 30 years old. And also we'll be very careful about the VFD and not messing that up. Even though it's not working properly, it's um it's still functioning. It's just not very bright. Let's get some cleaner into these switches somehow. One of these plastics being a bit older, likely to be a little bit fragile, so we'll be careful about that. Anyway, I'll get that off and then I'll figure out what I'm going to do with switches. So I pulled apart this front rear switch, which is the one I thought would be a good sacrificial switch if something goes wrong. And it's got nice gold contacts inside there. Button cap came off quite nice. You just lever the side very gently to try and unhook it. And I unhooked one side, then it's moved it over and it's fell off. Inside here, we've got a gold disc, we've got a rubber membrane on top and a gold disc which is on these flexible ones so they're all clicking quite nicely so I'm not worried about that part so it's obviously just a little bit of tarnishing in there so there's a gold contacts which means I need to use probably the, the deoxid gold in there and I don't want to pull them all apart because it, you know obviously pulling it apart is a risk of you could snap them on the buttons but it looks like you can get in there easy enough actually pull them apart and give them a proper clean up with a swab and stuff like that it's probably what it really needs to be honest. The oxide does a job but it's sometimes you need a bit of a abrasion with a bit of cotton swab or something instead. No, I don't know. I suppose I could risk it, I suppose. Yeah. So I decided to uh, go the route of putting the buttons apart and clean them with a bit of abrasion with a 
cotton swab and plenty of deoxid. And it seems to be working fine so far. I mean, these are gold plated, so, well, gold, yeah, probably all gold plated. So, um, yeah, in this case, I'll just clean these up as well as I can with a bit of abrasion like that. I'll pop that back in. Nice and one more button done. That's button number three. Got a few to go yet. Just a few. I'm going to leave the deoxid in there, I'm going to clean it off. It will evaporate by itself anyway. So that's those three done. This one here next. I'll just show you how to do it. So the ones on the edge, I can get to it with the tweezers, but because they're on the board in the centre here, a bit hard. So I've actually got this dental pick. I've got a few things like this, handy little tools. So this dental pick's got a nice angle on it, so I can actually get underneath the edge of the switch. Try and do it from this side and show you. So. I can hook it underneath and then just wiggle it along and try and get it where I want it to be to unhook it. All right. That's the back side off. Now let's do the front one. There we go. That's off. Works a treat. All right, let's do the last switch. And the reason I'm going to record this one is because it's always the last one that goes wrong. Left-handed, so you can see what I'm doing there. So this switch is actually really easy to clean. It's really nice. It's almost like designed to be serviceable in a way. Don't really get that these days. Things which are designed to be fixed. I mean, if I was really worried about any kind of oxidisation on these things, I'd actually use slightly more abrasive techniques. So I'd actually use like a fiberglass brush and just run it a couple of strokes across it, you know, just to take any oxidisation off. But the deoxy gold actually does quite a good job in itself. So a little bit of gentle rubbing with cotton swab and the deoxy should actually do the job. So I'm pretty happy with that. Last one, put it back in. Done. Let's put it back together and see if it works. Alright, let's try this again. Power it up. We still have a display, that's always a good thing. <laughs> Alright. Um, I probably need to do, redo that internal calibration because of that battery being replaced now. Um, but let's try some buttons out for a start. Let's pop this up so I can see what I'm doing a bit better. Go. You can see the display. Right, two wire, beautiful, straight away, no problem. Four wire, current, yep. DC volts, yeah, beautiful. Down range, up range, configure, yeah, that's all good. Auto range, menu, yep, that's much better. These buttons are working beautifully now. Yep. That's yeah, all looking good. Excellent. Internal temp. Zero degrees C. Hmm. Does that mean there's a bad sensor? Where is the sensor? Could be anywhere. <laughs> I don't know, I might have to look into this. This probably isn't normal, but the buttons are now working nicely. So that's that problem solved. So I've got a new battery in, buttons are now working properly, the relay clicking thing's gone. Maybe that's all of it. Let's put it back together properly. So let's just do this up to 200 millivolts, see if it clicks, I think it will. Yep, okay, so let's do the internal calibration. And then this time it should actually store it because it's got a new battery in there. I hope so. Right, internal calibration's finished. Let's plug the meter back in again. I unplugged it just in case it mattered. Let's exit that.
it's inject one volt or 100 millivolts. Yeah, 100 millivolts. I've just probably set the right number of power line cycles, stuff like that. Let's have a look. What have we got in configuration here? I haven't listened here at all yet. Integration time. Okay. Yes. 10 power line circles. Let's do 50. Number of digits. Let's do all of them. Protection, I don't know what that is. Ratio, no, because they're not using rear inputs. So, protection is on. I don't know what this is actually for. I should probably investigate that. I haven't even read the manual. So, I've got no idea. Exit that. So now we're doing 50 power line cycles. It's looking somewhat better. Don't forget, it's all warming up still as well. I mean, this is this should be warmed up by now. It's been on for a little while. Um, this will take, I think it's like two hours is the recommended time for this thing. So, 100 millivolts. It's doing alright. Let's go higher. 200 millivolts. That's a bit off there. Now, these use artifact calibration. Which means it uses a 10 volt reference and a 10 kilo reference to do the calibration. And I think it might be out a little bit. So 1 volt is definitely out slightly there. I think it should be like 1 more 0 there basically. But we are doing 8.5 digits. Okay, let's do 2 volts. Yep, okay, it's got the 10 volts. And it's 10 volts. So I should have 10 with like five zeros after it. And we've only got three zeros after it. So this may need a new external calibration. I mean, who knows what's happened to it? Because, you know, although there's a sealed case saying, oh, if you open it, it messes the calibration up. Well, you can mess the calibration up just by using front panel controls. Maybe the calibration's out. So what I'd actually do is, is I'd be inclined to leave this on for a while, let it run, let it uh, stabilise, you know, run it for a few hours, probably at least, and connect it up to my calibrator, although this is already really good. The calibrator has got some more digits on it than this has got, and also more capability. This is really accurate in itself. I've actually got these calibration details for that, so I actually know exactly what that puts out, which is how I know this has got some more zeros here, should be there. Yeah, so I'll put this on a calibrator and set that up, and look at it on that as well once it's had a chance to work but it looks like it's basically working now